objects and complements. In this lesson, we'll go over three different types of objects, a couple that we've seen before, and a new one, indirect objects. We'll also go over two, two types of complements. We've seen subject complements before. Object complements are new. To review, one common sentence structure we looked at was an action verb followed by a direct object. And these transitive action verbs carry the action across to a direct object. So she sold her car, I bought lunch, metaphors gave some spice. In each of these cases, you could ask sold what, bought what, or give what. And it's a noun after the verb that answers that question, what or who. The indirect object of a sentence is the recipient of the direct object. So she sold what? She sold her car. That's the direct object. In this first line, she sold her car to me, we have a prepositional phrase, to me. And the object of this preposition, me, refers back to the preposition to. If we kind of move that over in the sentence and drop the to, suddenly we have an indirect object. She sold what? Her car. And who did she sell it to? Me. Same thing in this sentence. I bought lunch, prepositional phrase for Allison. But if we move it over and drop the preposition, I bought Allison lunch. If you read this verb, I bought, does it make sense to say I bought Allison? That's who I bought? No, what you bought was lunch. And who received the lunch? That's Allison. In the same way that what she sold was the car, and who received the car was me. Or one more example, metaphors give what? Spice. Here it's an object of a preposition referring to that preposition too, but if I move it over and drop the preposition, what do metaphors give? Spice. What do they give it to? Writing. So the indirect objects were me, Allison, and writing. Let's compare the two different types of objects, direct and indirect. I threw what? The football. I threw the football, and who did I throw it to? I threw John the football. Indirect. She passed what? The soup. Direct. She passed the soup to who? She passed me the soup. Indirect. They brought tangerines. They brought what? Tangerines. Direct object. Who did they bring them to? They brought everyone tangerines. Indirect object. Another common type of sentence structure we've been looking at, linking verbs plus subject complements. Linking verbs act like an equal sign. So they fill in here, subject equals subject complement. And there's a linking verb where that equal sign is. Underlined are the linking verbs. But we could read this as duet equals fantastic, specimen equals libellula depressa, apple pie equals lovely, main dish equals linguine. An object complement follows a direct object to rename it or state what it has become. Chocolate makes who? Makes Tanya, that's the direct object, happy. Happy describes my direct object, or it states what the object has become. Some more examples. I found the guard sleeping. Guard is the direct object. Sleeping describes that direct object. We all consider her direct, unworthy object complement. I declare this center, direct object, open, object complement. We consider fish spoiled, once it smells like what it is. To obtain a man's opinion of you, make him mad. In bold are the direct objects, highlighted in gray are the object complements. We should note that only certain verbs will create opportunities for object complements, like verbs of making or naming. And there's some other ones, but many verbs it's not possible to put an object complement after the direct object. And also remember that object complements can be nouns, adjectives, or pronouns, just like subject complements. So let's compare the two types of complements. Myra looks angry. Myra equals angry. Angry describes Myra, the subject. We made Myra angry. Myra is the direct object. Angry describes the direct object. John is the captain. John equals captain. Captain describes our subject. We named John the captain. Captain describes John the direct object.